to discuss the uh, school district's uh, financial integrity rating system of Texas for the 17-18 school year. So I'm going to give you a little history. It was created in 2001. The system is designed to ensure that school districts are held accountable for the quality of their financial management practices and achieve improved performance in the management of their financial resources. The system is designed to encourage te Texas public schools to achieve quality performance in the management of school districts' financial resources in order to provide the maximum allocation possible for direct instructional purposes. The system will also disclose the quality of local management and decision-making processes that impact the allocation of financial resources in Texas public schools. The ratings are based on the 2016-2017 data. We just completed our 17-18 audit, so they have not had time to process that information, so we are looking at 16-17. The rating has been changed from seven indicators to 15 in the past two years um, to rate the district's compliance with the financial standards and benchmarks. There are four rating systems. Superior is an A, which is between a 90 and 100. We have a B, 80 to 89, a C, 60 to 79, and below a 60 is an F, or substandard achievement. Additional disclosures are the superintendent's current employment contract, reimbursements received by the superintendent and each board member, compensation to superintendent from sources outside FISD for professional consulting, or other personal, uh, personal <coughs> services. Total dollar amount received by superintendent and board members and board immediate family of gifts that have an economic value of 250 or more. Dollar amount by board members for the aggregate amount of business transactions with the district. So with that, we'll get started. Um, we did pass, FISD passed. Our rating was a C which was a meets standard. Our overall score was a 74. So I'm gonna start by reading the questions. Was the complete annual financial report and data submitted to TEA within 30 days of the November 27th or January 28th deadline, depending on the school district's fiscal year and date of June 30th or August 31st, respectively? Yes, it was submitted on time. Last year's answer was also yes. Was there an unmodified opinion in the AFR on the financial statements as a whole? You received a yes, and last year's answer was also yes. Did the external independent auditor report that the AFR was free of any instances of material weaknesses in internal controls over financial reporting and compliance for local, state, and federal funds? The answer was yes, as well as last year. <sighs> Was the district, school district, in compliance with the payment terms of all debt agreements at fiscal year end? Our answer was yes. Last year's was also yes. Did the school district make timely payments to the teacher retirement system, Texas Workforce Commission, and Internal Revenue Service, as well as other governmental agencies? Our answer was yes, as well as last year. Was the total unrestricted net position balance net of the accretion of interest for capital appreciation bonds in the governmental activities column of the statement of net position greater than zero? And our answer was yes. Last year was also yes. Now with that, we're going to get into uh, some of the calculations. Was the number of days of cash on hand and current investments in the general fund for the school district sufficient to cover operating expenditures excluding facilities acquisition and construction. The mathematical breakdown, they're trying to look at the number of days of cash we have on hand at year end. So whenever they did the calculation, we only had 35.6 days worth of cash on hand, which gave us a score of two, okay? So I did some research because I wanted to know not just where we were in 16, 17, where are we gonna be in future years? So in light gray down here, I looked and took our uh, current fund balance, and it shows that we currently have 87.15 days of cash on hand as of June 30th, 2018. So I want to make that clear that this will improve next year. Was the measure of current assets to current liabilities, the ratio 
ratio for the school district sufficient to cover short-term debt? And you can see the ranges below. Our mathematical breakdown indicated that we only had a 1.85, which gave us a score of 4 because we were between 1.5 and 2.0. I attempted to try to um, find the uh, calculations for this. I even emailed TEA. I did not receive a response. But I am uh, interested in seeing how this will come out for 17-18. I do expect it to improve. <clears throat> Was the ratio of long-term liabilities to local assets for the school district sufficient to support long-term solvency? Um, and then it also lists that if we had a change in district enrollment or membership um, over the five years, if it was an average of 7% or more, then you wait this. We did not have that uh, change. So the mathematical breakdown, uh, we were at 0.6543, which gave us a score of 8. I went ahead and, and looked at it for next year, did the calculations. We would be at a 0.61, okay? So that would give us um, also, I guess, an 8. Uh, and with that, I should have kind of clicked back and forth between these just to show you. I wanted to give you a quick history of the fund balance. I'm learning as well. Um, so I, I went all the way back to 12, 11, 12, and I looked at the trends. In 1415, we switched to a fiscal year end of June 30th. <coughs> and then in 1516, uh, we had some events occur, such as the tornado, and there was also a windstorm which affected our fund balance in 1617 as we um, did a lot of construction to repair those damages. Uh, and in 1718, I can confirm that we received $930,000 uh, from insurance. So I do know that that's one of the reasons that our fund balance dropped in the 1617 school year is we had to put out that expense and then we recovered it in the following year. Also, um, I did some research on this just because the first report, it doesn't always start on a level playing field for each school district. We have school districts that have a year end of 630, and then we have school districts that have a year end of August 31st. The state pays us all the way through the end of August. So when we have a year end, our fiscal year end at 630, the state still has two payments sitting out there for us that we cannot claim as cash equivalents. We book it as an accounts receivable. So it's sitting out there, but we cannot claim that in our ratios for the school first report. So as of June 30th, 2017, the state still owed us $4.4 million. How would that have affected this rating had we had that in our bank account, as other school districts did on August 31st? So please consider that whenever we talk about the ratings. I will continue on. Did the school district's general fund revenues equal or exceed expenditures? And if not, was the school district's number of days of cash on hand greater or equal to 60 days? As I mentioned earlier, our cash on hand was 35.6 days, so that was not more than 60. And our general um, fund revenues <coughs> did not exceed our expenditures. Our expenditures were higher. Yet again, we were putting money out on the line for construction purposes. We did not recoup those funds until the following year. So it was an all or none score, and we got none here. <coughs> For 1718, we will have a 10 because our revenues did exceed our expenditures, and we also had 87 days of cash on hand. Number 10, was the debt service coverage ratio sufficient to meet the required debt service? We got a 10. Yes, it was. Was the school district's administrative cost ratio equal to or less than the threshold ratio? And the mathematical breakdown, we had a 0.10, which put us um, at a perfect score of 10. And did the school district not have a 15% decline in students to staff ratio over three years, total enrollment to, uh, total, enrollment to total staff?
elevator to start again. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to the moment. Sorry. It's automatic. Okay. Well, sorry. All the other questions, I'll read them out. Y'all have a copy of the report, I believe. is asking if we had a 3% or less variance of, uh, in our data that was reported to TEA versus our annual financial report, and we had a 0% ratio, so we got a perfect score of 10 on that. Number 14, did the external independent auditor, indica auditor indicate the AFR was free of any instances of material noncompliance for grants, contracts, and laws related to local, state, and federal funds? And we got a 10 on that, a perfect score. Uh, number 15, did the school district not receive an adjusted repayment schedule for more than one fiscal year for an over allocation of the foundation school program funds as a result of financial hardship? We got a 10 on that. We did not have an adjusted repayment schedule. Okay. Additionally, um, I'm not going to read this to you, but you are able to view uh, the superintendent's current year contract. I'll allow you a couple of minutes to flip through that. by the superintendent for professional consulting and or other personal services. State uh, flow of cash problem, but is, is there uh, is there a flow of cash issue from the county to the school? From the county? Yeah. I mean, you get all your money up front, the, the, the property tax. There is not. Uh, I mean, there is a time of year in which we receive taxes. It is a, it is a cycle that starts in October, and the most the heaviest uh, receivables in about February, and then from there on, um, you know, we do collect some. The remainder of the school year, but the bulk of it is is from October through February. Okay, as it comes in, yes. Yes, there is. There's not. There's not much of a delay. Uh, we do receive the prior month um, taxes around the tenth of the following month. Is there, is there a rainy day fund in, the, uh, in case something? Well, that's what we're supposed to have is the ninety days worth of cash just in case the the state defaults on something that way we could support ourselves for up to 90 days. If you get those two months rolled in, are you still are you close to 90? We are going to be at 87 days next year. Close. Very close. Okay. Very close. Okay. Uh, now at the end of this fiscal year, we will be above 90 if we uh, if we uh, continue on the track that we are on. But for the 17-18 first report, we will be at 87 days of cash on hand. Well, that was strictly 
simply an informational item. There is no motion requested. Let's see if we can help mine. I'm going to get down to item number seven on the agenda since that pertains to you as well. Thank you. And so we did receive for the sale of bridges and property. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to consider the bid received for the sale of the Richardson property, a 3.314 acre tract out of 5.8 acres, generally situated at 1406 10th Street in Floresville, Texas, and more particularly described in a resolution of the board and take possible action to adopt the said resolution approving the winning bid. The district accepted bids on the 3.314 acres of property located at 1406 10th Street. One bid was received from a Mr. Mark Marlowe in the amount of $200,000. Administration recommends that the board adopt the resolution to accept the bid of Mark Marlowe in the amount of $200,000 for the sale of the property, authorize the director of finance to negotiate and execute a real estate contract and other necessary documents for closing, except those required by state law to be signed by the board president and authorize the board president to execute a deed and other documents necessary to affect the conveyance of the property. Strategy 5, the special education manual website 
has been recreated and updated. For Strategy 5, the September District Professional Development Day provided a variety of trainings on differentiation. In addition, special <coughs> education staff are receiving ongoing coaching support throughout this year from Region 20 on co-teaching. For Strategy 7, which is considerable progress, each campus is supporting the social and emotional learning of all students. Flores Hill Middle School and the Alternative School implemented Capturing Kids' Hearts this year, and the other campuses have implemented morning or class meetings for students. In addition, our VOCA grant counselors help support the social and emotional needs of students, and each campus in November held a pro-kindness assembly. For Strategy 8, um, CTE teachers at the high school are now meeting with core teachers each month to review data specifically on our special education students so that they can continue to monitor their progress. Performance objective two is for students to meet or exceed the growth measure as reported on the state assessments. Of the four strategies in this particular objective, two have had considerable progress, those are in blue, and two have had some progress, which is in yellow. For strategy one, a comprehensive RTI, which stands for Response to Intervention, please stop me if I say an acronym and, it's not, and I don't explain it for you, was drafted last year with the input of teachers and administrators. We are in year two of a three-year implementation plan. District and campus staff also attended the RTI, or Response to Intervention, Institute training that was held in November to gain strategies to refine this pro these processes. Part, for strategy two, part of the RTI plan includes the provision of a universal screener in reading and math for all students in kindergarten through ninth grade. Screening just means we give them a little assessment to see how they're doing. So the beginning of your screener was administered in September, and the middle of your screener is scheduled for January. The end of your screener will be in May, and then we will review that data to see how kids are doing. For strategy three, as stated earlier, the September Professional uh, Development Day focused on differentiation and was provided to all teachers. In addition, 15 staff members have participated in an online course on differentiation provided by UTeach at the University of Texas. As of today, I have 41 more staff who have expressed interest in taking that particular course. For strategy four, uh, the teaching and learning staff has met monthly with each campus since September to support implementation of their PLCs and instruction. And each month we conduct walkthroughs to help reflect on teaching practices. For performance objective three, the focus is on increasing the meets and masters performance of students on our state assessments. All five of these strategies have had some progress, so they are in yellow. For strategy one, the PLC protocols mentioned earlier are beginning to be implemented at all campuses. Each grade level has identified some essential standards, which we say are the most critical standards to learn for English language arts and math. Strategy two, the teaching and learning staff has reviewed data at two of the four campuses with the remaining data review meeting scheduled <coughs> for this Thursday. Strategy three, the PLC protocols for data review and formative assessment have been created and we are beginning to see implementation at the campuses. Strategy four, the gifted and talented plan has been audited by Region 20, and tomorrow, a GT committee will convene to make recommendations <coughs> after reviewing uh, those re the audit results. Strategy five, as mentioned earlier, the creation, creation of a district balanced literacy handbook will provide some needed guidance for our K4, K5 ER teachers. In addition, Funds from grants and from the district are supporting the purchase of some needed resources for guided reading libraries. Professional development has been provided in the area of writing, balanced literacy, <coughs> and guided reading, and more sessions are planned for the rest of this year. For objective four, which focuses on increasing the number, to, number of students who are college, career, military ready, which we abbreviate as CCMR, all five strategies have had some progress. The, uh, for strategy one, the traditional 10th grade parent night has been ex expanded to include ninth grade parents and students to make them aware of the Alamo Academy uh, possibility in their future high school experience. In addition, 
We have a pilot plan to administer the TSI, the uh, entrance exam for college, to eighth grade algebra students this year with the anticipation that they might have more interest in the economy and the interest in the academies as well as some possible dual credit offerings beginning when they are freshmen. Strategy two, in October, the CTE Advisory Board reviewed data projections for careers and identified the CTE program strengths, opportunities, and priorities. A revision of the CTE program is underway by the state of Texas, and they will provide additional guidance to our plan. For strategy three, the new accountability system a re with, with the new accountability system, a revised monitoring system for tracking CTE students in coherent sequence, as well as college career military readiness, CCMR, has been implemented, and the FHS staff are collaborating to maintain that system. And finally, for this objective, strategy four, AP teachers met at the beginning of the year to review AP student data, and those teachers have participated in differentiated training. Strategy five, the same system I just men mentioned about tracking CTE students for college career military readiness are also being used uh, to track CCMR for other indicators and are being updated by our house high school um, council. So, okay. On to goal two. Goal two provides uh, for an innovative learning environment that is safe and secure. Objective one is to decrease the number of incidents resulting in out-of-class disciplinary placement for students. And in this particular objective, there are two strategies, and both receive considerable progress. All campuses for strategy one uh, have participated in hope and kindness activities. Uh, the AP's uh, assistant principals are uh, routinely at their monthly meeting uh, reviewing disciplinary, um, uh, uh, the disciplinary numbers and reflecting on the restorative practices and sharing those with each other. Also, our FISD police officers are working with the campuses to support the restorative discipline approach. Uh, we've also incorporated Team Court, which is in conjunction with uh, Wilson County, uh, as a restorative discipline uh, strategy. Uh, two is providing opportunities for campus-based activity, activities fo focusing on social and emotional needs. Um, and students in grades 5 through 12, once again, have participated in the student Gallup poll. And uh, we just received those scores back, so principals have just gotten those to take a look at. Uh, and all students, uh, as uh, Rhonda mentioned earlier, participated in a pro-kindness uh, activities uh, in November and also Red Ribbon Week in October. Uh, this is uh, goal two, uh, performance objective two which is increased staff awareness regarding matters of safety and security on all campuses. There are four strategies here. Three received considerable progress with one being accomplished. Uh, the first strategy is utilize a variety of media and uh, uh, to provide required training and support at the beginning of the year. And the majority of our staff uh, are up to date uh, and have uh, completed all compliance trainings. Uh, on number two, support district-wide crisis teams and ensure staff is trained in proper procedures and protocols as outlined in the emergency operation plan, or the EOP as we call it. Uh, campuses and departments were trained in EOP procedures at the beginning of the year. Uh, we've also uh, created, uh, uh, participated in uh, other safety trainings. Uh, new entry door locks and cameras were installed on campuses and everybody is using that as well. And, uh, it's working very well. Uh, to provide safety on our campuses. Uh, the strategy three is um, ensuring implementation of strategies and facility improvements, um, and uh, as well as um, in, uh, at the identified district audit, uh, addressing items there, and then uh, also providing actor, active shooter training for our police. And FISD campus police have participated in active shooter training. Uh, also, a few of the additional updates we've done, we've included uh, uh, additional installation of fencing at the high school. We've installed new alarm system keypads at middle school and central office, as well as the entry doors that we mentioned earlier. And then, of course, strategy four, hiring the additional police officers. That was done at the beginning. Okay, so for performance objective number three, 
This goal is to provide students with opportunities to develop 21st century skills. There are seven strategies in this objective. One has been accomplished, three have had considerable progress, two have had some progress, and one has had no progress. So first, 